Uh, I would like to warmly welcome and thank the speaker from each partnering university that you can see here. And we will present the different parts of the course and reply directly to your questions right after the presentations. So I will ask all of you to keep muted until we reach this session. Um, you can see here how we'll spend this hour together. So I will start with an overview of the three semesters. It will be followed by a, a presentation of each specialization. And then you will have 20 minutes to talk to the professors. I will come back to you after this to indicate uh, how to find replies to practical issues on the website and some uh, contact details. So let's start with the objective and structure of the program. So the aim of the SESI master is to provide you with the skills required for the employment in sustainable energy industry. You will specialize in business case analysis, in modeling, project design in, and implementation, and you will evolve in a multicultural environment. The course is structured in three semesters, three sections, a core semester, a specialization, and a project, a practical project, uh, which is also a master thesis. And through this structure, you spend time in at least two different countries and make contact with a wide range of uh, European institutes and companies involved in the sustainable energy sector. The participating universities are all well established and recognized for their work in the field of sustainable energy system management. In the first semester, so which is from uh, September to January, you acquire a solid foundation in system management in the second semester from February to June, you specialize in a chosen topic in a different university. And at the end of the course, you complete this six months research project in a company or in a research center, depending on your interest, in your, on your interest and career perspectives. So who's who? Um, it is a European master, so several universities are involved and the coordination is done by Eurek. So I will try to clear your doubts on who is who and who does what. Um, there are five partnering universities on the University of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands, in the north of the Netherlands, in Honingen, and uh, the Technological University of the Shannon in Ireland, in Limerick. They, these two universities provide the first semester. They are core providers. Um, for the specialization, you can go either to on the University in Honingen or to the University of Saragossa in Spain or in OS University of Applied Sciences in Belgium. The University of Pisa is also partnering university, but they teach in on the University of Applied Sciences, so you cannot choose it as a, as a provider. And they can also help for projects for those for students who would like to undertake the project in Italy. And then Eurek is here to coordinate uh, all this. So some words about Eurek. Uh, we are uh, an association with 35 uh, research centers in renewable energy. You can see here on the map where they are located. Um, what we do, uh, we, have, uh, we have an independent voice in Europe and we are active in four different areas. We are uh, helping researchers with networking and visibility for their research. We help them with project development. We provide policy inputs to the European uh, institutions. And what is most important for you here, we uh, coordinate two successful master programs, European master programs on renewables. What we do exactly in the, the program, we are in charge of the administrative uh, coordination uh, on behalf of the university. So we are the first contact point for you if you have questions, uh, at least at the beginning when you apply, if you have questions, you can always contact us. So we are in charge of the application process. We are in charge of organizing the steering committee meetings. The steering committee is the decision-making body of the program. 
It's composed of one representative, one representative of each university. And we're also in charge of the communication and dissemination activities of the program and of the events. So your two visits to Brussels at the beginning and at the end of the program uh, for the welcome day and presentation days. Uh, this is a bit um, more details uh, of, on each semester, so I will not spend time on the specialization since they will be uh, presented by the professors directly, I will focus more on the core and on the project, so you can see here dates uh, that I already announced a bit before, so for the core, um, here is the syllabus for the core semester. These are indicative titles because from one core to the other in on the university or in TUS, they can be uh, entitled differently. So this is indicative and you find details on the websites for, uh, for each, uh, each university. So the core provides a solid foundation in system management with legal, environmental, economic, social, and also technical aspects. And you have theoretical courses, but they are also supported with labs. So during semester, you will learn about system integration and planning, modeling, strategic decision-making, communication, um, research methodology, 30 ECTS, so 30 credits will be awarded for passing the core semester following harmonized learning outcomes, which means that even if courses are distributed a bit differently in uh, the universities, at the end, you will have the same level of knowledge, allowing you to choose any of the three specialization offered. About the project semester, so it's from June to December, more or less six months, because you might start a bit later or finish a bit later, this, uh, this is uh, flexible. It can be done anywhere in the world, but it's really mandatory to travel in at least two different countries during the program, which means that for students who will choose on the university for the core and stay in the specialization semester for the system innovation management specialization, you will have to uh, arrange your project in another country, everywhere in the world, but not in the Netherlands uh, for any other uh, choice of specialization as you will have done uh, two different uh, countries in the first two semesters, you can then choose any countries. Um, you have to define your own topic and you have to find yourself the internship. So of course, UREC and the universities will uh, regularly contact companies to ask them to provide uh, some, uh, some project, but you cannot expect to choose from a list. So you will have to be active in, in looking for a, a project. At the end of the project semester, you will have to provide reports, uh, master thesis, and you will have to come to Brussels to present the results of your work in front of a jury of three professors. After having successfully achieved these three semesters, your degree will be awarded by the core university where you uh, registered. So you will receive a European Master of Sciences in Sustainable Energy System Management, either from on the University of Applied Sciences or, for, or from the Technological University of the Shannon. And UREC will deliver a certificate of equivalence uh, stating that the degree uh, is uh, equivalent in content and value uh, between these two universities. So I think this is the main information for the uh, core and project semester. And I will now give the floor to the specialization professors um, by alphabetical order on the specialization. So we will start with the sustainable uh, energy and ICT specialization in OWEST University of Applied Sciences. So I will give the floor to 
Nicholas, I'm putting your presentation. Hello, thank you, Natalie. Um, so my name is Nicholas, I'm from Hawest, and uh, I'd like to talk a bit about uh, the special uh, specialization uh, where we link uh, energy and ICT. So you can go to the next slide. Uh, or do I have control on it? Yeah, yeah you, you have to push a little bit further. Yeah, thank you. So, um, yeah, um, the aim is to link energy, renewable energy to ICT. Uh, uh, why do we do that? Um, because we cannot do renewable energy or energy transition without a big portion of ICT. And that's what we're gonna teach you uh, over here in this specialization. We're gonna make the link between energy and ICT. Why do we do it here in uh, Hull West? Because we have a, a department that's very strong in energy transition. And otherwise we have an, 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 a department that's very strong in IT and uh, ICT. So we uh, try to mingle these two into a program and maybe you can uh, push a little bit further, uh, Natalie. I don't have control on my, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> here we go. So what are we gonna teach you? Um, we're gonna talk about dashboards, dashboarding, how you prepare a dashboard, an energy dashboard that makes sense. Yeah? Uh, we're gonna teach you a little bit about energy audit because it's, it's, it's kind of the start of, of the whole process. We're gonna talk about big data, how, because in, a, in real life, in, in real energy, renewable energy, you have a lot of data you have to collect. And how can you manipulate it from data? How can you um, use this data? We're gonna talk about artificial intelligence, yes, uh, because this is uh, to make predictions on the basis of uh, energy um, models. We're gonna talk about internet of things, measuring, metering, uh, machine learning, and also a little bit about the uh, energy market. So we can continue a little bit here, Natalie. Yeah. Renewable energy and storage we're gonna link. So we're gonna specifically make the link. <laughs> yeah, just, just click, click further, it's okay. Yeah, just click a little bit further, yeah. So these are the other subjects and maybe if you go a little bit further, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, so why do we do that? There are two main reasons why we make this um, link between energy and ICT. Um, first, connectivity is very important, and, and I think uh, I'm convinced that we're not going to solve the energy transition problem without a big portion of um, ICT and, and a big portion of connectivity. You see here some um, some notes I I, I, I I take around from the internet, pointing out the importance in the future and also today about ICT and ICT application connectivity in um, um, the second reason why we would like to make the link is something that really comes from the industry. So we're very close with our departments. We're working very close to, um, to industry. And um, there, in practice, there's a big gap between the energy transition and how to work with that on an ICT level. So um, it's something that we really got from a lot of um, people working in a professional environment. So at that time, I think it made sense to make an important link between energy and um, ICT. Um, maybe the next slide, uh, Natalie. This will give a little bit more about the program. So we have actually five modules uh, in the specialization. Uh, you don't need to be an, um, an, um, an expert in programming. That's not the aim. We're gonna teach you how to deal or, or to integrate programming and ICT inside your project. Uh, you have a little bit of programming just to see how it works, but that's not the core. So we're going to talk, the first module, we're going to talk about energy audit, dashboarding, and energy flexibility. The second uh, module, we will talk about big data, internet of things, how to capture information, and how to work uh, through this information. The third module is an exciting one about uh, artificial intelligence. What are the artificial, artificial intelligence applications in the energy sector and also uh, uh, machine learning. Um, the fourth module is a module that links actually the renewable energy with storage because these two are very much interlinked and to link them very good, uh, we need actually ICT. Uh, you do that on an electrical and thermal base, both uh, energies are, are used. 
And the last one, um, we'll make a jump to blockchain and how we can use blockchain in uh, local energy communities, in energy uh, concepts. And uh, if we talk about blockchain and ICT applications, we cannot but talk also about uh, cybersecurity uh, and the importance of that. So that comes uh, at the last module, uh, module number five. So that's a little bit, uh, the, the, in a nutshell, the, the program we're presenting to you. Uh, I will be there later on if you have any questions on the program. And uh, well, I give the word to uh, my colleague. Thank you very much, Nicholas. I will now uh, give the floor to Saragossa University. So, Jose Vicente, I don't know if you have something to share or if you just, uh, I, I give you the possibility to share your screen. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I need to go to my setting. I have sent you an email right now, just in case it's not. I'm sharing it. Okay, thank you very much. You're very fast. <laughs> so uh, I'm Jose Vicente Pinar um, from the University of Zaragoza. And this is the specialization of, uh, of the sustainable energy, energy mark management. And um, this presentation is available in the UREC uh, website. So I will uh, just hover over it to uh, highlight the more important things of the specialization. Uh, Natalie, please, you can uh, go away. Uh, here we are in, in Zaragoza. It's a, a very nice city in between Madrid and Barcelona, one hour and a half from uh, Madrid and Barcelona by train. And uh, next one, please. Um, what we are is the University of Zaragoza and the Circe uh, Mixed University Research Institute that are very well uh, we have very uh, great prestige among the universities and the institutions dedicated to the energy markets. And we are located in the campus Rio Ebro in the north of the city that has both the faculties of energy and uh, engineering and the economic and business. So uh, we are uh, providing you this multidisciplinary approach in this specialization. Please next. Um, about learning, and this is uh, what, uh, what uh, it uh, is about. Uh, but uh, this is about knowing the manage of resources and consumption and investment, knowing the variables involved in these energy markets, and of course, knowing the regulation of the market in order not to uh, commit mistakes. And this is, as I told you before, the most multidisciplinary approach of the specialization. And next one, we have the structure of five modules. Each module has the same weight in the whole specialization and has its own uh, coordinator and its own assessment. And they are the socioeconomic aspects of the energy. We are um, taking up everything you have learned in the core semester to focus on this uh, sustainable uh, energy management and starting with some general socioeconomic aspects of the energy, focusing on renewable energy, on the electricity and efficiency markets, on systems and tools for energy management, and the last one very specialized in the enterprise world, in the uh, startups and in the, the organization of companies that are focused on energy. So this is where we are showing you the both technical and, uh, and uh, business aspects of the energy management. And next one, the, the day to day of the specialization will be, uh, as I told you, in the Rio Ebro campus. 
we are from February uh, to May, and all the resources will be provided by the specialization. The, the, we have the classroom, the laboratories, we're going to uh, open the virtual learning platform. And uh, next one, please. And the day to day will be uh, with classes normally scheduled in the morning and uh, lasting four hours approx. And of course, we're with some visits to, uh, to enterprises both very big enterprises and uh, very tiny startups of the of the area and with conference experts and uh, and so on and hope, hopefully the covid will allow us to grow and grow in this offer of uh, more activities to this specialization that uh, of course are very interesting for you next one as i told you uh, we can we, we schedule visits to Red Electrica, for instance, or to photovoltaic or uh, eolic, uh, lots of, of different kinds of, of companies. And with external lectures, not only coming from the university, but also from uh, different companies that are leading the transition and leading the energy markets and the management of the, uh, of the uh, energy systems. And um, finally, Next one, please. Uh, okay, uh, what are what are you going to be when you grow up? And this is the the job perspectives of this specialization. So uh, we have highlighted here four pillars of the job perspectives. Of course, energy manager, not only in uh, energy focused uh, companies, but also in conventional companies that have weight in the energy management. Uh, auditor or energy assessor for installation, efficiency projects, renewables, uh, everything. Entrepreneur, of course, uh, as I told you before, we have a specific module of this uh, startup uh, and development of uh, professional projects. If you have this initiative to create your own company or your own professional life and uh, to be an expert in management in uh, consultancy or, or any other company to help uh, different enterprises. We have practical information, as I told you before, you have this available on the website, the university information, the, the, and the Zaragoza, of course, have lots of social life, nightlife, green life. You have green areas to practice the sports. I, I'm not the person to sell Zaragoza. It will be not very, uh, very well. I'm, I'm uh, very in love with my city. So uh, in this minute we have, we, we can talk about the city and the offer we have for you. And we are, of course, welcoming you. This is all from my side. Thank you very much. So keep your questions for Jose Vicente for after the last presentation. And now we are moving to the last but not least one. So Frank from on the University of Applied Sciences, uh, you will present us the, the system innovation management specialization. Yes, indeed. Good morning, everyone. So I will try to share my screen and uh, open a presentation. Uh, there we go. Hopefully you can see it. Is the screen clear? Yes, yes, we can see. It. Very good. So good morning again, everybody. Uh, introduction was already made. My name is uh, Frank Piri. So I'm also a teacher in the core provider of the Hanse. And I'm of course a teacher in, uh, in the system innovation management uh, specialization. And how to explain uh, a specialization in five minutes. I, I could talk for an hour about what we do. I think that's the same for uh, Jose and Nicolas, but I've tried to uh, focus on an example that we're actually trying to solve in our specialization. For instance, in Groningen, we have a problem with our grid operator. They don't have the capacity to uh, supply and move all the electricity, renewable electricity that we produce. You can compare this with your road network. So if you're in a busy city and you're driving during the congested areas, you know that you're always in a traffic jam. Well, if you produce solar energy all in the Netherlands at the same time, you have that same traffic jam. And actually, um, we are helping uh, a, a local co cooperative to produce renewable energy, and they cannot connect to the grid. The grid capacity is just too low. So what are we willing to do with that? Well, 
in our specialization, we will look at how to design a, a business case or a business ecosystem to make this a viable uh, case. How can we uh, uh, design such an engineering system that can make profit, but also works uh, uh, from a technical standpoint and also works from regulation and to help local communities produce their renewable energy. So what kinds of skills will you learn and do you need to solve such a case? Well, we of course start with uh, what is the place of this renewable energy system in the whole energy, let's say, system that we have, for instance, in the Netherlands or Europe. And we call that multi-level design. So you know what you're doing on a very specific level in that village with the, so, uh, the solar panels, but you also know what that means on a European level, for instance, for our uh, Paris Agreement. That's very important to know there. We have to know about renewable technologies, how they work. So we will expand on the core and go further into detail into these renewable technologies. And of course, the infrastructure I talked about. So we cannot um, use the grid to uh, supply or move all of our electricity. So how does that work? We need to think about how these systems integrate. So how do we use other technologies to solve actually the problem that I just presented for you? <clears throat> then, of course, we want to know not only about money, Money is very important, but if you want to solve uh, um, global warming, you're also looking at uh, carbon, carbon dioxide, for instance. So we want to know about these environmental indicators as well. So yes, it might uh, earn us a lot of money, but if you don't save a lot of CO2, then why are we doing this? And this is actually called multi-criteria analysis, where you take multiple criteria and you compare them with each other to find out like, okay, what is the best CO2 savings per euro, for instance. Then we focus on modeling. So how can we bring these systems together and understand a little bit about this? We use models. And in this model design, we can optimize the system to find out how we can improve our case. Uh, we can also do business models together with technical models and combine those. We don't use the ICT level uh, that they use in Belgium. We go a little bit higher level where we use, for instance, uh, static uh, Excel models. Of course, energy law is also very important. If you have a technical and economical solution, but you're not allowed to do it by the state, then you're still uh, not able to make this business case work. So you have to know about these permits in, in Europe or in the Netherlands and how this energy market works to make sure that you can put a good business case in there. And finally, of course, a strong element goes out to business ecosystems. How do you design a business ecosystem in such a way that we can make this uh, uh, cooperative of, of companies and technologies work together to make a little bit of profit and to save as much CO2 as you can? And here you can see back also one of the elements in the business ecosystem is non-economic values. And that's what I mean with these environmental values. So, for instance, if we look to the case that I uh, explained in the beginning, what might be a solution there? And this is one of the solutions that uh, we as researchers and our students actually came up with. We don't only produce electricity with a solar park, but we combine it with other renewable technologies as well, and we produce hydrogen. And together with that, we want to find out if this, for instance, can be a, a profitable business case. And essentially what you're doing is a kind of economic engineering. So you're trying to engineer a system, a renewable system that can actually fit in the current energy uh, system and can make some profit and save a lot of CO2, which is not easy. This economic engineering, here you have to take all these skills that I uh, uh, explained before and combine them together to make a real, what we call business ecosystem. And um, students that actually finish this program, we see them end up in uh, mostly uh, advisory companies where they can have, give advice to municipalities or cooperative about, for instance, this eco-engineering. We see them also come back in companies where they actually improve not this system, but the system of a company. So a production company can save a lot of energy or material, and these students can actually focus on that. And we also see our students come back in government where the demand for this system kind of approach actually comes back. So that was it for me, very short. Uh, if there are any questions, I think we will uh, get to that later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Frank. I will stop sharing now. So we have the screen back. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> oh. 
Oops, um, here it is. So thank you very much. And uh, I will now open the floor to all students who are with us. So it's the moment for all your questions. We are not uh, too many. So you can open your microphone to no, turn on your cameras if you want and talk directly to the professors. If you are shy, you can also type your questions in the chat <laughs> as you prefer. Um, we can have uh, 20 minutes for questions. So who starts? Yes, hello everyone. My name is Jose Luis. Nice to meet you. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. This looks, looks amazing, the master. And uh, I have uh, two questions. The first one is uh, for the core. Well, it's a general question. And how is the uh, how how difficult it is the the technical part in energy in, in the engineering field for a person that has a background in economics or in the financial sector? Maybe I, either Frank or Corina, you would like to reply to this one? Maybe Frank, you can answer. Yeah. So um, actually in, in, in the season master, we try to keep it on a, on a, on a well, uh, a medium, medium level, but our focus is on technology and on economics. So that we go pretty well into detail so to have some uh, background in, in, in at least economics and engineering might be very useful we have some students that actually don't have that and they can reach it but they have to work pretty hard for it because it's it's uh, for especially the engineering and the economic parts are pretty high level okay okay thank you thank you frank and, yeah. and the other question is uh, the three specialization uh, took a little bit of technological and modeling analysis. And what programming tools or what is the basic tool that you use to make this uh, model uh, analysis, project analysis and uh, strategic decisions? I mean, for example, I don't know if you use Python or you base everything, your economic analysis in Excel or which, which tools are you using? Shall I start from the uh, specialization from the Hanse? So our focus is mainly on the methods that you need to solve these questions. So we don't focus a lot on modeling itself. So that's why we use, for instance, mainly Excel. Um, and in Excel, uh, because the background of many students in Excel is already pretty high, so it's easy for them to pick up in Excel, but we're mainly focusing on methods and, and, and uh, things that you can learn to actually apply uh, well, net present value, eh, the economic uh, things or all kinds of other calculations. And I think especially in Belgium, there you will focus a little bit more on specific other language. Yeah, I can take over from you, Frank, thank you. Uh, yeah, we go a little bit deeper into, uh, especially Python, because Python, we, we use that to um, make you aware how working with AI and uh, blockchain is. So, um, Actually, you don't need to have any um, experience in, in programming or in Python, but it helps a little bit. So you, you will have some exercises that are done in Python because simply we cannot show you the how the system works uh, without making you do some exercises in Python. Uh, but you very well, we give you some information on that. And uh, we're not gonna make you programmers, for instance, that is not the aim, but we want to use um, Python uh, to show you the importance of uh, ICT and how you can use ICT in um, in energy projects. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And um, I have the last question, please. And uh, about the regulation part of the of the master, how do you approach? Um, uh, because I I assume that uh, Europe has a, a general regulation, but each country has their their the parliament and the regulation changed by the country. I don't know how to deal with uh, this information in the master. That's a, that's a nice question. We actually focus on the European Union. So okay. uh, we focus a lot with the regulation in the European Union. And as far as, of course, we, we mix it up with Dutch regulations because our core is in, in the Netherlands. 
But we try to keep it as general as possible to have an idea of how uh, energy law works and how the energy system works. And especially when you look to, to the energy system, uh, we have, uh, well, a European law on the energy system. That's mainly what you will, will learn. And also the Paris Agreement, huh? that's, that's things that's more on a European level. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Another question? Um, I have a question. Um, how technical is is the like scientific? Like, do you have a, a concrete example um, of how? <laughs> I don't know how to, yeah, how scientific it is. I can have a, I can have a go at that. Um, so if you look to the core, for instance, um, yeah, we do really uh, dive into the technologies where you can make some calculations also on how, how much a wind turbine produces, but it's not that you are going to design a better wind turbine. It's not that you're going to design better solar panels. Now you understand how a solar panel and a wind turbine work, how they produce energy. And that's where we actually leave the level at CSIM. We have another master, Emra, and there you will dive into details of how to improve systems and, and really more the technical stuff. And CSIM, the basics are enough. Well, the most, the most technical thing in, in, in the ICT is of course the, 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 the programming, but also we, we do optimizations between renewable energy and storage. This is something that we need ICT for to do that right. But that's not, uh, it's challenging, I can assure you that. Uh, it's technical for a part, but it's very, very uh, eye-opening uh, how you can use ICT to link uh, that with the renewable energy and energy system. So we do that, yes. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna guide you good uh, through that process. Yes, and the, the specialization in in Zaragoza is more or less the same uh, approach. You need to know the variables, how to interact the units, the uh, these basics concepts to uh, analyze the feasibility of uh, of some project of some uh, enterprise but not be the person who designs specifically the numbers of these uh, of these grids of these projects okay thank you my question is answered Okay, there is a question in the chat about the English requirements. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's about the difference between the TOEFL and the IELTS. Um, they are both accepted. <laughs> they are both accepted. If one is cheaper than the other, uh, why not take the cheaper? It's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's okay. Um, another question for Nicholas. Can you share a bit on the career perspective of the ICT specialization? Yes, yeah, sure I can. Um, I can give you an example of a students last year who uh, did their project actually in, um, uh, in a big industry uh, environment where the demand was actually to, to, to play with uh, energy flexibility. So they, um, they looked at all the internal um, stream sources of energy inside uh, a production plant. And then from that point of view, they optimized that with artificial intelligence to uh, optimize a, a, um, a prediction of what uh, uh, energy production they should uh, go to. So um, yeah, is there a, a possibility? I think in the industry, there's huge demand. Uh, about people who, who are able to link the, the energy side, the renewable energy side, with artificial intelligence and blockchain technology. Um, I think uh, there's no problem for the students when they finish off um, to um, find a job. And even also for, for um, yeah, for stages, 
you see there's a huge demand coming from industry uh, for these kind of projects. I hope that's, uh, that's enough if you have additional uh, questions on it. Um, I can also, some people, uh, another person who, who worked with uh, the stage in another company, he just kept working there. He's still working there. So he was hired immediately and yeah. Mm, so uh, yeah, from that point of view, I think it's, um, it's, it's a good, good thing to do, I think. Yeah. I can confirm from previous years that it's often the case uh, that students uh, doing their project in the company are offered the job in the company where they do the project. Uh, it's not systematic, of course, and some students do not want to stay in the company where they did the project, but um, but it's uh, it's often happening. So it's also a good thing to to choose well where you do the project. <laughs> Any other question? We still have a bit of time for at least one last question. I see the chat. Yes, the thesis is about the project in the last semester, indeed. Yeah. And yes, it's chosen by the student and it is supervised by someone in the core university. The specialization can help uh, if you have a, a, a topic which is really uh, specialized uh, in your specialization, you can always receive some help from a specialization professor, but the supervision, uh, the main supervision and the responsibility for supervision is from the core university. I hope it replies to your question. Yeah, it's also a little bit the initiative of a, of a student to, to pick out a, a subject. Huh? He, can, he can help you doing that, but actually it's part of the, <laughs> part of the um, education to, 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 to stimulate you to look for an, an, an interesting uh, thesis or an interesting uh, subject. We will guide you through that, but uh, it's you that will have to take the steps. And it's you, yeah, you to, to define it. Yeah, um... to define it. So you have a... Uh, a kind of a liberty also huh, to choose uh, the direction you want to go. Huh? Yeah. Just to add to that, uh, um, as core provider, we are indeed responsible for uh, uh, the main supervision of the project. And what we always do at the start of the project is we have some main elements where this assignment needs to uh, confirm to. For instance, it has to be something with sustainability. It has to be master level. But in, with, within this criteria, you have a lot of space and a lot of room to find very interesting topics. And this is something we will do together with you as students and figure out what will be the best uh, topic for you and, of course, uh, how it will fit in the company. Yeah. Okay, one last question. I don't see. Hello, uh, can I ask uh, something? <laughs> uh, hello. Uh, no. I'm Halil. I'm Halil. Thanks for the valuable information. Uh, my question is: You already said that, but uh, I'm living in Groningen, Netherlands, and I'm planning to uh, choose co as a core university Hanze U.S. And if I study my core semester here and also my specialization, I have to study abroad for my thesis. That's right. You have to, yeah, indeed. You have to it's find a project uh, outside. It's mandatory, I guess, right, to com uh, complete yes. the program. Okay. It is. Uh, so it means that you will have to look for the project earlier also, because it's a bit more difficult to, to find it abroad uh, when. Yeah, it's, it's difficult than specialization, I guess. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. That was my question. Thank you. This is, uh, this is how we can deliver European master degrees. So. If we, we want the title, we need to, to we need students to travel. 
So I see a question in the chat as well. Huh? Do we need yes. any prior work experience in the relevant field? And uh, that is not required. So if you finished, for instance, a bachelor or another master, you can just flow into this master as well. So we see this students that also, we, we saw some students funny enough from the oil industry that said, okay, this is not a very sustainable industry. I want to go into, for instance, more sustainable and they had prior experience and flowed in. It helps, but it's not required. So I think I will continue with some practical information. I still, or maybe another one in the chat. No, just a thank you. So, um, okay, just uh, I'm continuing. Yes, with some practical information. Uh, first, I will. I advise you to go to the sesim.ureg.be website. Um, where you will find more information and detailed information on everything that you've heard this morning. First, for the specialization, you have to go to the partnering university, specialization providers, and you have to open the drawers, the orange drawers, to find uh, the syllabi, the practical information, things about the visa, uh, all, all this, uh, this information. And you also have on each uh, uh, page the contact details of the professors in the specialization. So do not hesitate to send them emails if you still have questions and did not have time to ask them today. Uh, inside the website, the, for me, the most two important pages right now for you are the FAQ um, page here where you will find information on the tuition fee, about the project, about many, many things, all the, the most uh, the frequently asked questions that I receive uh, via emails uh, are the, have their replies here. And also in the application area, the how to apply page where you find everything about the admission, educational requirements, the documents to present, the deadlines, uh, it's, uh, it's complete. So before applying, please read these two pages. Uh, to have an idea of uh, what our former students do now, uh, I advise you to uh, watch the videos that we have on the website. There are some testimonials to read. There is a map with students' ambassadors who are ready to reply to your questions, like questions about student life uh, in the cities that uh, will be better replied by students than by professors, so do not hesitate to contact them. There are also the newsletters, uh, and there in the newsletters you can. There is always a section about alumni, uh, alumni so you can uh, you can explore them. Um, these are um, examples of uh, some former students' career paths. So uh, you can see that the. First, they came from different backgrounds and they have very uh, different careers now. Um, so you, you can see this is uh, pictures from the LinkedIn profiles. You can also uh, check by yourself to have more IDs on LinkedIn. Um, do not hesitate to type SESIM as a keyword and see a bit what you can find. Uh, they have uh, interesting career paths. Um, I see more questions in the chat uh, now, so I can maybe quickly reply to some of them. Um, yes, more reference letters are always okay. They are, there is a, a field in the application form uh, where it's uh, other documents, so you can put uh, more reference letters than the mandatory ones. Um, and about the thesis, if it has to be related, um, oh, no, no, sorry, this is a, this, this was replied. Um, how can I improve my chances of securing admission as I'm having a one year gap after my bachelor's? This is a question for maybe a professor. <laughs> if, you, if someone wants to, to take this one to improve the, the chance, chances of, uh, securing admission with a one-year gap. I, I'm not sure it makes any difference. So shall, I, shall I add 
uh, Natalie will answer that because I'm also sitting in the admission committee, so I'm pretty close to that. Um, that is, in principle, uh, if you have a good convincing uh, motivation letter uh, and you have a nice explanation for what you did in that year, or even you don't really need that. I think it's not really essential. The, the, the improving the chances is to have a really good motivation that, that stands out and that really shows your passion for, for the topic. And I think that's what we are looking for. Thank you. And the results of the selection process, well, this really depends on the number of applications we receive. Uh, we are trying to give replies approximately three weeks after we receive the, the application, but it's not, uh, it's not always the case. So the last moment, very latest day, date at which you would receive a reply would be in July. Um, but you can expect a reply before this. But I don't want to give uh, <laughs> too much hope <laughs> in case we receive too many applications. So, um, okay. That's for the questions about the technical uh, background level. In case you have a technical engineering background and would like to go deeper in this, uh, yeah, background in electrical, mechanical engineering, math or physics, then please have a look to the second European master program we have called European Master in Renewable Energy, which is really engineering focused. So the website is here. There is also uh, on the university and Saragossa University teaching this in this uh, program. Um, and just um, to continue staying in, keeping um, in touch with us, you can of course explore the website. You can follow us on Twitter, and these are the two uh, email address to contact me and Rafaela. So the two uh, people, Eurek uh, team for the masters, and we are happy to reply to your questions uh, anytime. So I will uh, thank you all. Uh, for your participation, active participation to this webinar, and uh, wish you a very nice day. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, Natalie. Bye. Bye bye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone.